We here at the Movie Ticket Radio Podcast salute all the YouTubers who do all their videos because, you know, I found out this is a lot of work. Hi, I'm J.R. Russ, and we're posting our podcasts here now just for more people to find and hear them. But, you know, John Landecker and I are pretty much radio guys. In fact, folks have said that we have faces for radio. That means no pictures, no video, no graphics, just this. So sit back and enjoy the oral experience, spelled A-U-R-A-L. That means sound, not what you're probably thinking. Movie Ticket Radio. And welcome to the Movie Ticket Radio podcast. Yes, that's our official name, and thank you for joining. I am your host, J.R. Russ, with... Your friendly co-host, John Records Landecker. Yes, career broadcasters, and he's Mr. Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, we have the Movie Ticket Radio radio station that you can go to at movieticketradio.com and hear the hits you hear in movies. And this here is a podcast where we're talking about the movies, and we're actually playing a few clips of music. Not the biggest hits, because you know what they sound like, but ones that are more obscure. So enjoy those musical interludes as we talk about the songs you hear in movies. And, John, what are we talking about today? Today. We're going to do Deadpool 2. Ooh. We love swimming in the Deadpool. Yeah. <laughs> and had such a good time with Deadpool 1. Indeed. <laughs> I love the uh, poster for Deadpool 2 because he's leaning back over the chair like in flash dance. Only yeah. instead of rain falling on him, it's shell casings. <laughs> <laughs> Great sense of humor in that movie. It's very wacky. In fact, I, there were a couple of things that we didn't have time to cover in the first one because we had so many songs in it. And I did want to mention a couple of things. And that was in the first movie, the opening credits, which were similarly goofy in the second one, they were originally set up as a placeholder. Oh, yeah. But Tim Miller found the parody titles funny enough to put in the movie. And as a bonus, due to uh, no actual names being in it, the filmmakers were not required to abide by guild rules about crew and actor credits. Right. Cheapos. So instead of conventional opening credits, the producers, main actors, writers, director, all identified at the beginning of the movie, like produced by Asshats, starring God's perfect idiot. Yes. Meaning Ryan Reynolds. I know. Sexiest Man Alive, yep. when they showed the People magazine cover. A Hot Chick for Marina Baccarin. <laughs> a British villain, Ed Skarin. Indeed. A gratuitous cameo, Stan Lee. And a CGI character, which was Stefan Caprick, the voice of Colossus. And then written by the real heroes here. Ah. And directed by an overpaid tool. <laughs> <laughs> So pretty funny stuff. That's great. And at a talk at Google, Ryan Reynolds revealed that the taxi driver was named after a really cool guy he knew in elementary school who died when he was hit by lightning. Wow. And it was meant to be a tribute to him. Isn't that something? Well, hmm. what do you know? Olivia Munn auditioned for the role of mm. Vanessa Carlisle, and that audition resulted in her being cast in Cyclock in X-Men apocalypse as cycloc oh cool that's like we were talking before about people who vied for the roles and didn't get them but somehow it works out yeah it happens all the time all the time i also noticed in the movie that deadpool was wearing a b arthur t-shirt did you see that at one point <laughs> i might have i don't it's been a while but it wouldn't surprise me at well, all his swords are named b and arthur <laughs> <laughs> I got to watch that again. Yeah. I got to watch these movies again. That is great. Yeah. It's Cause those funny. are the kind of things you might not see the first time around, you know? Definitely. Um, yeah. So on with the show and all okay. of the hits in it. Uh, you bet. We, we've got uh, Ashes, which was a song I'm not really familiar with, but uh, done by Celine Dion. I have, I don't know. I don't know the song Ashes. Well, I know, wait a minute, a tisk, no, a tisk and a task, it's, uh, we the all green fall and yellow down. basket. No, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. That can't be it. Um, <laughs> toy soldiers. That's the one you're thinking of. Oh, is it? Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure it's a fine song, otherwise Celine Dion would not be doing it. Well, we got our house band here, uh, Mr. Okay. Mr. G, this is a good chance to use them because we know what a lot of these songs sound like, but okay, Google, play Ashes by Celine Dion. Ashes by Celine Dion. Sure. 
Wawa has even more options with delivery curbside and order ahead. In the Boy, what a weird song Wawa that is. How, <laughs> how about that? Oh, I think this is where she gets shot. <laughs> you sure it's not a comic scene? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. It's, it's heartfelt. All of her songs are heart. In fact, the Titanic is My Heart Must Go On, isn't it? All right. Celine, All right. Back to Canada. Okay. okay Google, right. stop. Mm, close the border. <laughs> then we got uh, a great song, hit song, 70s yeah. song, All Out of Love. Air Supply. Yeah. Written by Clive Davis and Graham Russell. Mm-hmm. Now, you know who Clive Davis is, of course. I certainly do. Big record producer, uh, yep. manager, all yep. that stuff. Yep. Um, I have Clive Davis cred. How so? Well, second degree Clive Davis cred. How so? Third degree. <laughs> My wife's aunt's friend is the grandmother of Clive Davis's grandson, and they got married, so the aunt got invited up to Clive Davis's house in suburban, like up to Hudson River somewhere in New York, and said the house was wide open. It was like a house party that they had before the wedding. Hmm. Grammys, gold records, everything oh, yeah. just out on display in the house, not locked up or in cases or anything like that. She said she was sure there were some security people around and cameras, etc. But it was just, hey, come in and relax and enjoy yourself. She said it was outstanding. And she really didn't know Clive Davis's name much at all. But mm -hmm. even she was wowed. Wow. Yeah. So he seems like a very nice guy. Yeah, he does. He, he, he really does. And a great chooser of talent. But that's not the totally. Right Un unbelievable. He recognizes talent like you would not believe. Yeah. In all sorts of genres. Yeah. Not confined to one type of music at all. Right. And film and, and that kind of thing, too. Yeah. So, so uh, we're going to move on with X Gong Give It To You by DMX. <laughs> and hit and the Swiss Beats. Yeah. And Shatik King. And it's performed by DMX, which is really good because I just bought the album BMV, which yeah. uh, <laughs> renewed my... Um, Car registration. Ah, great. I, I don't know what DMX does, but uh, BMV is just doing great. It used to be Digital <laughs> Music Express, but not right. for a band. I think it was for a CD company or something. Yeah. And, you know, it's not Swiss beats like Swiss chocolate or Swiss oh. Switzerland. It's Swiss beats. Oh, I'm sorry. With Swiss beats. Z's. Yeah. Beats Got a Z in there. Yeah. Got to get your Z's. Yep. And then yeah. Hit the Dance Floor says, courtesy of Killer Tracks. And that's actually a production library. That's not even like a real record. Maybe that's exactly what it is. Maybe they just used a, a track that doesn't require any licensing. Yeah, it's just funny that it was in the soundtrack listing. But yeah. it's not really a record. And then yeah. a huge hit from a lady still performing and making the rounds today, Dolly Parton's 9 to 5. Great song. A lot of fun. That's uh, all part of a big killing scene <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> I think at a warehouse or something. Uh, what does she do? She gets up and fixes herself a cup of ambition. That's right. Rising in a cup of ambition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you know that that came out the same time that Morning Train by Sheena Easton oh. came out? And that was called Morning Train, parentheses, 9 to 5. And there was act you know? actually some confusion as to which song was on the chart as 9 to 5 for a short time until mm. people realized, no, no, that's the Dolly Parton one. That's the big success. Gotcha. And then uh, another 80s hit by Aha, Take On Me. Take Me On. Exactly. Right. Uh, Magni Fruholinen, Morton Harkadet, and Palawaktar. I like those uh, Scandinavian names. Yeah, they are the uh, McCartney, uh, Lennon, and Jagger of Iceland. <laughs> they would do well on um, Wheel of Fortune, too, because they got a lot of extra vowels. Holy mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now here's a one that takes a left turn with a song from the 1983 movie Yentl. Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> Barbara Streisand. Yeah. Written by Alan and Marilyn Bergman and Michael Legrand. Mm -hmm. He was grand. Mm -hmm. Then you got your Shoe Boot by Nathaniel Ratliff and the Night Sweats. 
I remember them. Yeah. Had a, they were over just the other night. <laughs> but I don't remember the song Shoe Boots. No, and I no. don't remember in the movie, I'm an old cow hand from the Rio Grande, and it's the Jack Benny recording, so this is from the 30s or 40s. You know, obviously we got to go back and look at this because these songs may be appearing, they may have earned a credit, but there could be moments in the movie where they're way in the background or... Yeah, which is you know so, still saying. makes them a movie song. That's oh, okay. no, no, absolutely. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, it yep. sounds like somebody shot your dog. You well, right? it's, no, nobody did that. It's been a little construction in the other room. Something uh, must be at the floor. Okay. Well, hopefully Jack. everything's fine. Hit the yes. floor, Jack, and don't come yeah. back no more. Mm -hmm. uh, the Osborne brothers. Don't know the Osborne. Now, wait a minute. Do we? Well, no. there's Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy and Clem. <laughs> Love Hurts, they did a version of... The Nazareth song? I don't know. Boodle Bryant wrote it, and no idea. All right, yeah. let's, let's find out. Okay, Google, play Love Hurts by the Osborne Brothers. Love Hurts by the Osborne Brothers. Sure. Uh, commercial. Oh, for liquor. Ooh. Oh, no voiceover, though. Uh, nobody made money there. <laughs> That's the Nazareth song. Nice. Yeah. A toe tapper. It's good. Okay, Google. Stop. <laughs> well, there you go. What's their name again? The Osborne Brothers. I got to remember that. Oh, we'll play that someplace along the line. Oh, I know. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, then another biggie. Big hit from the 70s. It's everybody knows this as the Pina Colada song, but it's not. Oh, Escape. Yeah. Right. Rupert yep. Holmes. Well, see, you know yep, that. Yep, yep. Oh, um, yeah. Great song. Rupert Holmes, kind of a poignant writer, singer, and uh, had some pretty good songs. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of twists in his music, like Him was a good one, a few others. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. Bangarang, featuring Syra. Performed by Skillerex. Not familiar with that. Nor am I familiar with Tomorrow by, oh no, Alicia Morton. That's from uh, Annie. You mean Tomorrow, Tomorrow, yes. I'll see you tomorrow. Yep, I'll love oh. you tomorrow. Yep, that's uh, the Annie song. How about song. that? Because that's where Deadpool is dying. and he, Who doesn't well, think of Annie at that time? I know. That, and that's what's so ironic and quirky about this movie. <laughs> Moving on to Nobody Speak. Shh. Performed by DJ Shadow, featuring Run the Jewels. Exactly. And then Thunderstruck, a biggie. Oh, by great song by ACDC. Angus Young and Malcolm Young. Thunder. 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 Yeah. And uh, Enya also did one. Only Time, Who Can Say? Uh huh. By Enya, Ricky, Nikki Ryan, and Roma Ryan. Enya, Enya. I think her big hit was uh, Sail Away, but that's a. Also kind of weird Scandinavian sound. I think she was one of the <laughs> the contest winners, the great song contest. You mean Eurovision contest? Eurovision. She was a Eurovision winner, I think, one year. No kidding. I think so, yeah. And then we've got Yunhai Chalachai. <laughs> I don't know, don't know that song, and I can't pronounce any of these people in it, so it's a foreign song, I'm sure. Uh, the song from when... John Cusack held yes. the boombox over boom his box head. Boombox above his head. Above his head, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Peter Gabriel, In Your Eyes. So big yep. song. So there's two movies that song. song's been heard in. That's yeah. one of the things. Yeah. If you listen to Movie Ticket Radio, the streaming format, you, you'll hear that, and at the end of the song, it will tell you what movies it's been in. So there's something you mm. can listen for at movieticketradio.com. Plug, plug. Absolutely. And then, oh, more things falling in your house. Are you sure your house isn't <laughs> collapsing or anything around you? <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay. So, <laughs> no, these damn pieces of furniture, you order them, and then you got to put them together. Oh, I'll you know, tell you. That damn Ikea. <laughs> Where are we here? Do, 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 oh, Fly do, Like do, an Eagle. Do, do. Yep. Steve Miller Band. Yeah. Big hit. Good. Yeah. Big yeah. hit. Big yeah, hit. Yeah. And yeah. then Fight Dirty by, mm. I don't know, what do you think? Google and all? Okay. And Mr. I don't know. Crew? I don't know. I don't know. Ashes. Do not know. 
Jordan mm-hmm. Smith. Once again, uh, but that we started off with Ashes yes. by Celine Dion. Oh, well, yeah. So yeah, I guess this is Ashes to Ashes. May I coin a phrase? Oh, well, now oh. if we can just find uh, Dust to Dust, I think we got it. Yeah, right. And a song, featured, a song <laughs> featured in the previous Deadpool, the Deadpool rap. Mm-hmm. And it's the X-Force remix by Team Headkick. It sure is. <laughs> I like all of them. And it sure was a yep. head kick. Uh huh. So, welcome to the party, everyone. Uh, a Diplo song. Got that in there with Diplo featuring, not just with them, but featuring French Montana, Lil Pump, and Zahava Ward. Zahavia. Love them. Love them. Love them. And mm. great song by Pat Benatar. Saw her in concert a few years ago. Still looking and sounding great. We belong. Mm-hmm. And Eric Lowen and Dan Navarro wrote that. And finally, if I could turn back time, share. It's share, everybody. Written by Diane Warren. Yeah. Also, Deadpool has officially entered the Marvel Cinematic Universe as the character appeared alongside Avengers Endgamer's Korg in a promotional video. So that is big stuff. Congratulations to him. Yes, congratulations to everyone with Deadpool. Uh, Stan Lee, I believe, had a cameo there as well. He usually, when he was live, did appear in most of what he filmed at, at some point. like Sort of like an Alfred Hitchcock. You know, he'd show up in a scene or Yeah, a cameo. Somewhere. And, and he yeah. uh, was the DJ in the strip bar. In the first one, right. and I think he was a customer at a like an outdoor cafe or something in, in this one. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. And I think you mentioned this last time, the F word was said 79 times. That's for the first one, and I, the <laughs> second one I'm pretty sure is just about the same. And I haven't seen those stats yet, but I'm sure. And Ryan Reynolds also loves Gross Point Blank, which is an excellent movie we need to do one day. And his comment about shooting Ajax in the head and blanking the brain hole is a nod to Dan Aykroyd's character in that movie. Gotcha. Oh, man. That's a great movie from 2018, Deadpool 2. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, moms and dads. Everybody out of the pool. Time to go inside. And don't be dead. (laughs) Right. It will ruin your whole day at the pool. <laughs> so that concludes another Movie Ticket Radio podcast. Remember, we're everywhere podcasts are found. You can get it on the MovieTicketRadio.com website, direct link there, or other places. And remember to like and subscribe. That's right. So yep. uh, we'll catch you next time. I, I, what do, I think, you know what we need to do, John? We made a mistake here. What did we do? Well, we did Suicide Squad. And we did the original one, but we neglected to do the most recent Suicide Squad. So I think next time, even though uh, we lied to our audience, we're going to do that one next. All right? All right. Okay. So uh, I think we're out of here. I'm J.R. Russ. I'm John Landecker. And we'll catch you later. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Movie Ticket Radio.